Hey everybody and welcome back for part 14, Core Fundamentals of Web Development. This is going to be our last scheduled video on animations and we're basically going to work to apply this slide down animation that we've got for our add link form. See that it, it takes just a second, it pops down, it has a little bounce at the end. It's got a cool effect and you can apply these things in anything that you do. So that's what we're going to do in this video. I'm excited to get started with you guys, so let's go ahead and dive in. All right, so if we notice in our project, we've now got two new files, our animations, HTML and animation CSS. These are gonna look pretty similar to what we saw in our uh, transitions video. So we've got just a, a, a div here with a class of box and an ID of slide right. And in here, this is what our box looks like. So it's a little bit bigger than the one we had previously. Uh, we've got the basic styles here. It's got the height, width, background color, margin. And then we've got an ID selector for our slide right. And that's what we're going to start working with. So a, a couple of things that are pretty similar to um, between animations and transitions. One is the optimal things to animate on. Again, some uh, the exact same as transitions are the three transform properties. So scale, rotate, and translate. And the opacity property. So those are your four most optimal things to do animations on because, and you'll have to do some further reading to get specifics here, but these don't require a repaint of the screen. Now, another thing that's similar is there's several different animation properties that you can apply. Um, so you can do those all on separate lines, but you can also combine, the, combine them to one line the same way we did with transitions as well. So let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna work with our slide right animation. And the first thing we wanna say is what the animation name is, and the animation name is gonna be slide dash right. Then we can do our animation duration, say that's going to be three seconds. Our animation delay, we'll say is one second. And let's leave it at there for now. Now, now the next thing we need to do is actually define what this slide right animation name is. And that's something that we actually have to define. So the way we define our animations is we do a keyframes and then we give it the name that we want to call it. So slide right is what we want. So the way I think of animations is really like flip books. So you think about the, the frames or a page in a flip book and as you flip through them really fast, it looks like they're animated figures moving around. That's what I think of for animations here. That's why keyframes makes a little sense. You're looking at the, the individual frames that get cycled through. Uh, and basically what we define is when we want those uh, frames to occur. So if we're looking at an animation duration here of three seconds, if we type in a 0%, this is gonna be whatever style we want applied at the very beginning of our animation. If we want our, type in 100%, this is gonna be the style that's applied at the very end of our animation. So if we start with a transform and a translate X of zero pixels, so just start at the beginning, and then we could come down, let's just copy this, and at 100%, we want this to now be 300 pixels. So let's save this. And we see basically we just get the exact same thing that we had with transitions, except for one small caveat that it pops back here to the original spot. But that at this point, with just a, a finite start and a finite finish, this is, this is basically the same as what we had with our transitions. Now the power of the keyframes is that you can define as many of these as you want. So if I wanted to come in and we'll do a couple more here. So let's do a 25% and transform 100 pixels and then 50% will translate, I didn't type that in right, translate X to 200 pixels. Let's make sure we type this in right. And at 75%, transform translate X to be 300 pixels and then this last one to be 400 this will still look pretty much the same except it kind of goes in these increments right so from 0 to 25 percent it's just gonna do uh, basically translate X by 100 pixels so it's gonna go from here to here and it's gonna have a slight pause because then it's gonna go from where it is at 100 pixels to our 200 so it's kind of like this stair step effect now, one of the other things we could do is we could have it go from, let's say, zero pixels to 400, back to back to 100, back to 300, and then to 400. And now we get this kind of like back and forth effect. 
And the cool thing is you can get as creative as you want with these animations and kind of do these custom things that really fit what you're trying to imply. Um, and, and I think it's important that you understand that animations give a big sense of what's going on in the application. And I'll give you an example here in a second. But before we do that, we're going to work with a couple of more properties here. So there's, there's animation direction. And if we say normal, this is going to be our default here. We could also say reverse. And this is going to start from 100% and come back down this way. So we should see it kind of be at the other side. It does some transitions and then it ends at the 0%. So that's going to be reverse. Let's take that back to normal. And then we'll have an animation iteration count. So this is going to be a number or infinite here. Uh, so we could say we want it to do two times. And I'm just going to speed this up a little bit. Let's do this in one second. So it's going to do the full thing, and then it's going to do it twice, if you saw that. So it did that twice. We could also do infinite. All right, so this is going to go on forever, basically. It's going to just keep on going, and that'll probably make your head hurt after a while. So I'm going to change this down to one. And then we've got our animation fill mode. And forwards is going to let it stop at the 100% mark. So without this, let's just comment it out, we do our animation, we get to 100%, and then we come back to what the original value is. With forwards, this is going to stay at what the ending value is, so at 100%, so it's going to stay there. Uh, if you do backwards, I think that's the default, so that's actually just going to come back to what it was back at 0%. Yep. Uh, and we can leave it at forwards, that way it ends at the, at the end. Uh, a couple of more things is the animation play state. So this is basically paused or play. So if I say this and do pause, if I spell it correctly and say pause, it's just not going to play here. Then if I do play, it'll come in and actually do the animation. Now this is something that most likely you will, uh, you can apply this, uh, change the animation play state in JavaScript or when you apply another class, it might change the animation play state. So let's say you apply a class to a running animation or a, to let's say you apply a class to an element that is currently running through an animation infinitely and then you apply another class to basically toggle the the state to play or to pause all right so that's the play state and then we've got uh, the same as transition here we've got the animation timing function and there's several different things including ease in that we've seen before so it's going to start out slow and then get faster ease out which is the opposite ease in ease out which does a little bit of both and then your cubic bezier which you guys will have to that's where you can do some extra learning to go and play around with that so like our uh, transitions we can put this all on one line so we'll say our slide right is going to be the animation three seconds for duration zero seconds for delay normal is going to be the animation direction let's see forwards is going to be the animation fill mode running is our play state so I've got play up here this could be running there and ease out let's say is going to be our timing function so I'm gonna take all of these and comment them out and we should see we basically got the same thing and we can configure it the same way so if I wanted this to be really fast do this in 0 0.5 seconds and then it's super super fast um, alright so that's that's kind of the basics of animation now I mentioned a second ago that you can actually really give some you can really give the user some feedback based on animation. And one of the most common ones that I've seen is if you have a login form, something like this, let's say, where's our, where's our finished product? So let's say you have a form of some sort and you enter in the wrong type of information and click submit. Well, a lot of times they'll do this little shake effect to basically, it's, it's basically simulating like shaking your head saying, no, that's not, that's not the correct kind of input. And it really gives that user you know the feedback they couldn't submit something went wrong and that shake is really implying like hey you didn't do this the way that it should have been so let's take a look at that we're gonna do a little shake effect here so we're gonna comment out uh, this one comment out and then we'll uncomment the shake I do that wrong oh gotta come up one line more so now we've got our div with a class of box and now we want to do our shake effect so our shake effect is actually gonna be fairly similar to uh, what we just had shake 
And basically what we want to do is we want to take these to be really small increments. So we're just going to toggle just a little bit. So we'll say we'll go from zero pixels to five pixels and I'll say back to zero and then back to negative five and then back to zero. So it's going to start out at zero, go to the right five pixels, back to zero, left five more pixels and then back to zero. So it's going to have a really quick shake effect. And then we'll obviously need to tell our shake ID selector what transition or animation we're using. Animation, so it's going to be shake. And then it's going to be 0 0.5 is the uh, duration. And we can do a zero second delay. And um, we can, I think we can really just leave it at that. That's all we really need. So save this, and we should see just a little slow shake effect. And we can actually speed this up 0 0.25, and it'll speed up. And maybe we can do an iteration count of one or two so you see a little bit more or four that's maybe a little too much what about three maybe a little too much I like two so there's a little shake effect there of two so this is just it's just translating X to the right translating it back left translating it left again then back right and then when we increase our iteration count we get a more a more real effect and we could have actually in preparation for this demo um, I came in and I created basically 0%, 10%, 25, or 0, 10, 20, 10% increments. So I was doing twice as many of these declarations. And actually what I could have done was just left what I have here and increased the iteration count. And that actually really gives the effect that I'm looking for. So it's just kind of telling you like, hey, no, that's not it. You didn't really do that the way you're supposed to. And maybe I want to speed this up a little bit. I think that looks pretty good. And I think that really simulates like someone shaking their head at you. They're telling you, no, that's not exactly what you're supposed to be doing. That's not what we're looking for. All right, so the last one we want to do is basically our slide down animation. So let's come back to our HTML. Let's comment out our shake. And then let's uncomment, slide down. We'll come into our slide down selector. And at this point, we're going to keep this pretty simple. I want it to be animation, slide down, take 0 0.5 seconds. And we'll do the fill mode of forwards because we want it to stay at the where it ends. So when it ends, we want it to stay there instead of coming back to where it was. So here we'll do our keyframes, keyframes, and the identifier is going to be slide down. And so what we want to do is we want to start at 0% and we want to move this thing. Actually, we're just starting at uh, translate Y of 0. So we're just going to start out where we are, 0, not 9. And then at 90%, we want to transform, man, this thing is not catching what I'm trying to type here. 90%, we want to transform and translate Y. 525 pixels. And then at 95%, we want to transform, man, I am not getting this to type in correctly at all. Sorry, guys. Transform, translate, Y, and this is going to be 500 pixels. And then to finish at 100%, we're going to have transform translate Y of 510 pixels. So basically, what we're doing here is we're coming from 0 down to 525, then we're coming back up a little bit and then back down. So what it's going to have is just a subtle bounce effect as it as it slides down. So let's save this and we'll see it one more time. So you see, right as it gets down here, let's refresh this page, right as it gets down here, has just a little bounce up there. And it looks pretty good. You can play around with this and tweak it, but that's basically what we want. We just want it to come on down to do a little bit of a bounce effect and then just kind of sit where it ends. So that's what we're going to basically copy over to our, uh, to our existing project. So we want to come into our app CSS. And I'm going to create a section at the bottom here. Scroll all the way down for animations and we're going to basically define what we just had so I'm going to come and copy it and these are going to have slightly different numbers in them so we're going to start at negative a thousand pixels so we're going to take it off the screen and then we're going to slide it on down so 90% it's going to come down to 25 pixels 95% it's negative 10 and then 100% is going to be the zero pixels so let's save this and we'll take a look at our existing project. Now, one thing I just realized is that I left the name here or the title of our animations file to be uh, transitions instead of animations. So I'll go ahead and update that. 
But let's come back to our existing project where we've defined our slide down. And basically what we want to do before we actually apply that, let's see, this is going to, when we show this, so we, have, we remove the hidden class and this thing pops up. We want to, at 0%, move this up 1,000 pixels and then have it come on down at 90%. It's basically going to be here, but it's going to be a little bit past 0, which is where it is in this. Then it's going to go back up negative 10, so it's going to move up just a little bit and then back down to 0, which is going to be that, that kind of bounce effect that we talked about. So let's go into, go to our add link container here. And we want to say animation. Uh, what we want to do is we want to use our slide down animation. We want it to take, let's say, one second, um, no delay, and then we can do an ease in timing function. Let's save this. We'll come over, we'll open our panel, and it's actually applying to the entire add link container. Really, we want this to apply to just our add link form. So let's come in and let's move this to be applied to the add link panel. So let's come back to our CSS, let's find our add link panel, and it looks like we don't have a selector for it yet, so let's come in, we'll keep it in our form, so add link panel, and then we just wanna paste in this animation. So now we see we get it popping down, let's close it real quick and open it up, and we're getting a slide down effect here, and it's got the little bounce at the end. It's pretty subtle, but I think it gives it just a cool effect here. Little bit of bounce, make it just feel like it's kind of sitting down on top of this uh, platform. And as it does, it bounces just a tad, so it's got a cool effect. And that's gonna do it for all of the functionality. We've met all the functionality of our finished product. I think we've done a pretty good job. We've added lots of cool things. In this next video, we're gonna do kind of a wrap up and talk about what we did. And then I'm curious to hear from you guys. If you guys have any requests for additional videos, just let me know and I'll see if I can do those as kind of bonus videos at the end. So all right, thanks for watching guys. I'll see you in the wrap up video coming up next.